We're going to do another example of solving a linear programming problem. In this case, I want both the minimum and the maximum values of the objective function subject to the constraints. As we did before, the first step is to be able to graph the system of inequalities. So I need each of them in the form y and then something else on the right-hand side. So I'm going to solve each of these for y. That will enable me to graph them. Now, once again, I have x and y are greater than or equal to 0. This is actually very typical. They're called non-negativity conditions because these are highly applicable problems, and in most of the real-world problems, you cannot have negative values. So I'm only looking at the first quadrant, and I'm going to start graphing my inequalities. So first of all, minus a half x plus 2 has a y-intercept of 4 and slopes downward. It is going to help me in the long run if I know the x-intercept. So the x-intercept of this graph is what happens when y equals 0, and that's at 4. Okay. Now the next one is y equals negative 3x plus 7. Okay. It has a y-intercept of 7, and the reason that I wanted this x-intercept of the previous one is the best way to graph this is to decide if the x-intercept is to the left or to the right of the one I already have. Well, solving for the x-intercept of this second graph gives me a positive 7 thirds, okay, which is less than 4. So this is a fairly steep graph. Okay. Now, our last one is y equals a half x plus 7 halves. Has a y-intercept of 7 halves, or 3.5. And then it slopes upward. So, I have all my graphs. Now we're going to find our region. Okay. I am above the minus a half x plus 2 and the minus 3x plus 7. I know especially on that last one it doesn't look much above, but given the choice we're always going to choose either above or right for greater than or equal to. And then I'm below the a half x plus 7 halves and above the x-axis to the right of the y-axis. So I see that my region looks like this. You'll notice that it keeps on going on for forever in this direction. This is a region that is called unbounded because it has a boundary side missing. And that's going to cause a little bit of a problem because the region will continue forever along this boundary and along this boundary. And we're going to have to deal with that. But first, I see three corner points that I need to find the coordinates of. This one down here, I already know because it was an x-intercept. It has coordinates 4, 0. So now let's go after this top one. This is where the line a half x plus 7 halves intersects the line minus 3x plus 7. So I set them equal to each other in order to find the corner or vertex of the region. Once again, I'm going to multiply through by 2 so that I get rid of fractions immediately. And I find that x must be 1. Plugging it back into the easier of the two equations, I get that y must therefore be 4. Now for this equation, this is where the line minus a half x plus 2 intersects the line minus 3x plus 7. Multiplying through to clear fractions. And then solving for x gives me an x value of 2. Plugging it in to the easier of the two equations gives me that y must be 1. So I have my three corner points or vertices, but I'm also going to need to take into account these boundaries. And that's a little bit harder to deal with. So starting by setting up my table, I'm going to put the three points I know 
and I'm going to have two additional points that are one each going to represent these boundaries. When we look at this boundary, every point on this boundary is a point on the x-axis, and points on the x-axis all look the same. They have an x-coordinate, which I don't know, but their y-coordinate is always zero. So points on this boundary will always look like x comma zero. Furthermore, we don't start on that boundary until this corner point, so the earliest x we can plug in is 4. So our points that are on the x-axis that are bordering the region all look like x comma 0 with x at least 4. Now let's look at this boundary region. Okay. Points on this boundary region all lie on this line. Okay. So if their x-coordinate is something that I don't know what it is, their y-coordinate is going to be a half x plus 7 halves because they all lie on the line y equals a half x plus 7 halves. Furthermore, the very first x coordinate for a boundary point of the region along that line is 1. So we're only going to plug in values bigger than or equal to 1. Now we're going to evaluate each of these at our objective function. So I get 4 plus 8 is 12, 8 and 2 is 10, 16 and 0 is 16. Now these latter two are a little bit interesting. Plugging in x comma 0, I get 4x. But the smallest value of x I'm plugging in is 4, so this is at least 16, and it's going to keep on getting bigger from there because I'm allowed to plug in as big as x as I want. This one is a little bit more work. I'm going to take a little bit of a side for that. I'm going to get 4x plus twice a half x plus 7 halves which is 4x plus x plus 7, or 5x plus 7. Again, I see what's the smallest this value could be. Well, I'm only allowed to plug in numbers bigger than or equal to 1, so this is at least 12. Now, I need to actually answer the question. So I look and I say, what is the minimum value on the right-hand side of my table? And the minimum is, of course, 10. So the point 2 comma 1 is my minimum. Then I say what is the maximum value? Well you may be tempted to say it's a 16 except for the fact that these late, latter two say at least on them meaning they will keep on getting bigger forever and they're never going to stop getting bigger. This means that there is no maximum achieved for the objective function subject to these constraints because it keeps on getting bigger along those boundary lines.